Good afternoon. Today has been another crazy day. We're, we're literally on the brink of war with Lebanon. Since the morning hours, Israel has struck 1,300 targets in Lebanon, and the Lebanese have sent, hun- and the Hezbollah has sent hundreds of rockets all the way to Haifa. They even went all the way into Judea, Samaria, and they hit Nablus, and um, an Arab village indiscriminatory hitting civilians. But one of the crazy things that Israel has been doing is for since 2006, Hezbollah has been going to Shia families in southern Lebanon, all over Lebanon, and they've been paying them a monthly fee to take over a floor in their house. And what they've done is, it could be the dining room, it could be any floor, and they've put in rocket launchers and missiles, and they have a way where they could just open up and shoot these long mid-range or any-range rockets from these houses. And every month they pay them a stipend. And what Israel did is, Israel mapped these places out for the past 15 years. And now Israel took them all out today. And in fact, Israel took over the Lebanese radio and warned them that they have a certain amount of hours to be out of that area. And then they destroy the place. And you see... And when Israel attacks these places, you see the, the, the secondary bombings taking over because all the rockets are exploding and exploding and exploding. And to think that someone would take money to have a rocket in their home to be able to l- be launched at civilian populations. And these are not Hezbollah members necessarily. Why would they do such a thing? Why would you want to... A, risk your home, risk your family, and for what? To harm civilians? Today Israel said that in one day, alone mostly, but throughout the last 11 months, they've already knocked out 50% of the capabilities of Hezbollah. And that's a lot, because Hezbollah, some say had 150,000 rockets, or whatever it may be, I don't know the number. But Israel also in the last 72 hours, has eliminated the entire, the entire head of Hezbollah operatives, all the way, everyone except Hezbollah. In fact, today they took out Ali Karaki, who was the head of the Southern Command in Lebanon for Hezbollah, and was in, in charge of launching missiles at Israel and attacking Israel. And they took him out too. It's remarkable, the intelligence and what Israel does to protect its citizens. But it's interesting because interesting, when you look at Lebanon, and you look at all these thousands of homes of people renting out their homes to Hezbollah to let missiles be launched from there to Israel. And then you look at the contrast. You look at the Jewish people. So, it's interesting. Because this week's Torah portion is, <laughs> is Nitzavim. And in the portion <coughs> of Nitzavim, it begins, Atem Nitzavim, Mayom Kulchem, you stand today, all of you, in front of God. And then it goes on to say, Rasheichem, your heads, Shivteichem, your tribe leaders, and then it goes on to say, <laughs> your water carriers and your ch- wood choppers. And the question all the commentaries ask, if he says you stand in front of God, all of you, all of you includes everyone. So why does he have to continue and say that not all of you is your leaders and your heads and your wood choppers and your, and your water carriers? Of course that's included into everyone. And the answer the rabbis give is a very powerful answer. The rabbis say that you might think, <laughs> you look at society, and it's society, people have status. Ooh, this guy's a hedge fund manager. This guy's a big doctor. This, this woman has a PhD. And this one has uh, invented this. And this one lives in a gorgeous home. Their status. Where are you in society? But when you stand in front of God, it's Ayom Kulchem. We're all equal. We're all God's children. And we all have to be united. And what God's telling us is when he says, You stand all in front of God and he enumerates at different levels. He's trying to tell us that we have to be united, indifferent to our status. If we're elite or non-elite. If we're Ashkenazi or Sephardi. All Jews and all humans have to be united. United to fight hate, to fight radical fundamentalists who want to kill to fight evil. And in front of God's eyes, it's irrelevant who we are. But we're all one people. We're all God's children. And, you know, <coughs> last week on Thursday, excuse me, last week on Tuesday, there were four soldiers 
who were killed, bringing the total of Israeli soldiers killed since the, the onset of the war, not on October 7th, but afterwards, the 346. One of these people was a paramedic. Her name was Agam Naim. And Agam Naim is the first woman to be killed as a soldier, to be killed since the war began, October 10th or whenever it began. And she was a paramedic. And she was supposed to be released on th <laughs> Thursday. And two days before, she was killed when her helicopter crashed, when it was going to rescue soldiers who were injured in an explosion. And her mother says that before her daughter came home, she was thinking and worrying what's going to be. Is my daughter going to make it home safely? And even if she makes it home safely, how's her mind going to be? And how's her emotions going to be with all she saw and all she went through? And like a week before, she was meant to be released. This girl, Agam, got sick and they sent her home. And a few days before she felt better, it was Monday, the day before she got killed, and she called her supervisor says, you know, I'm feeling better, I want to come back. And the supervisor says, look, you live up north and you're going to be released on Thursday. Just stay home, travel all the way from up north to come down south for two days, it doesn't make sense. And she said, no, I want to go. And she was speaking to her mother and her mother says that... What? They told you you don't have to go back. Why are you going back? And she says, you know, Ma, I want to go back for two reasons. Firstly, I want to say goodbye to all the soldiers I worked with. And secondly, what happens if something happens and there's a crisis? They need a paramedic and one of my fellows get killed and I'm not there. How am I going to feel? And she went back to say goodbye to her soldiers and she got killed. That's the story of Atam Nisav Mayom Kulchem. In Hezbollah, in Lebanon, they united to have rockets in their house to launch at indiscriminately at Jewish homes and Jewish communities. But the Jewish people, this woman, Agam, this lady, this hero, she wanted to go back so she could help protect and save someone who got hurt. And no one knows her name. She's not a famous soldier. She's not a lieutenant. She's not a general. She's an ordinary Jew. But there is no such a thing as an ordinary Jew. And there is no such a thing as an ordinary person because we're all God's children. And that's the difference. Hayom Kulcham, we stand united. Some people are united in their hate, indiscriminately to kill and to maim. And then when we fight back, they complain and they cry. But Israel today is teaching them a lesson. For 11 months, Israel begged Hezbollah, let's move back and let's make, let's work this out politically. We need you to move back to the Litani River because we can't live under threat. And Hezbollah laughed and Hezbollah ignored. Since October 7th, they started launching unprovoked rockets at Israel. For 11 months, there's 100,000 Jews who couldn't live in their home. And this week, Israel taught them a lesson. Starting with the pagers, going on to the radios, then on Friday, knocking out the entire Radwan and leadership of Hezbollah. Today, continuing with that, and the 1,300 targets that Israel took out. Maybe now Hezbollah will wake up to a settlement, but if not, Israel will do what it has to do to protect the people. Because by us, it's Atem Nitzavim Hayyim Kulchem. We stand all the water carrier and the judge and the leader all together in unity to protect our people and to protect the future of Israel and the Jewish people. Amin